Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be looking at the graphing of the binomial distribution. Or it can be more like the graphical representation. So there's not normally too many questions on this, but it's useful to know. It will help your understanding, as well as lots of the terms and terminology that we'll discuss and explain will be used later on in other graphs, which you will more likely be assessed on. But it's still important information that you need to know. So... The first one, when we're graphing the binomial distribution, we're looking at the two axes. We're looking at the probability, and then over here, we're looking at the, the x. So if you remember before, there are some key features. So n equals like the number of trials. P is equal to like the probability success rate. So then when, we, when we're working out the probability of, let's say, x is equal to 2, that's what we're saying is that there are two successes. And so that's what so like the 2 here refers to. So let's say the probability of x equals 2 is equal to 0 0.2 and that would correspond to up here with 0 0.2 which represents sort of a line there and then you could have some other ones and it will look like whatever it is there. And then if you were calculating the probability of x this is being greater than 3 you would need to add up so that's here. You need to add up this one, the three, plus all the other ones. So you need to get all those va all these probability values. You need to add them all up. Yeah, so the first example we're going to go is just the basic. So we have, on this side, we have the probability. And then this side, you have sort of like the 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 x so the number of successes or yeah the not so the number of successes so we'll say that the probability is equal to 0 0.5 so that means the probability of success is half so this could be a coin toss or it could be any different type of example and we'll say that the number of trials is equal to 10 so some important things to note the firstly obviously the maximum x is going to be 10 because you can't have 11 successes when the trials is 10. And so where the first thing is there's going to be sort of a center point and a mean. So we'll calculate this later, but important, where do you think the mean is going to be? So just have a think about it. And then so pause to have a think. If you can't quite get it, that's alright. But if it's anything, if it's half, so half of them are going to be successes. There are ten trials. Then it's likely that the most likely outcome is going to be 5. So that's in the middle, so 10 and then 0 0.5. And that can be calculated by going 10 times 0 0.5. So we'll talk about later, but just keep that in mind. So that means, yeah, 5. So 5 is going to be sort of the most likely outcome. And then you have 6 and 4. So let's say the probability there goes about there, and it goes about there. So there's, there was a deliberate reason why these probabilities are equal. And so the reason for this is due to the 0 0.5. And there's a really important thing for that, and that is it is symmetric. That sort of makes sense. So the probability that x is equal to 6 will be the same as x is equal to 4. And you can show that using the formulas, like even actually using the binomial uh, formula, so the n c x times 0 0.5 there, times 0 0.5 there, and you can actually see that that is the case. And this is because p and q are equal to each other. So here, with 6, that means p, the number of with 6, sort of like P is increasing and Q is decreasing, that makes sense. Like the number of successes increasing, Q is decreasing. Here, um, P is decreasing and Q is increasing because the number of failures is, decre uh, is increasing. But because they're equal, this has no change. So therefore, you have that. Like the probability is obviously going to change the further along you get, but on either side of the mean, they're going to be the same. And so you can calculate the other probabilities... There, just roughly. And so, as you can see, it's symmetric. And a nice way to describe this one is... Uh, not, 
it has a bell curve type of shape. But yeah, symmetric. And important thing to note is that all these probabilities add up together must always equal 1. So up here, even though it's the most common, it still may be only be, let's say, 0 0.3, the others maybe like 0 0.2, and it goes down to like 0 0.01, for example. Okay. So that was symmetric and that was 0 0.5. So what happens if we increase n? So p is equal to 0 0.5 and n is equal to 10. I mean, we've already seen that that sort of looks like this. They're badly drawn with you know, 5 when this is x. And then this is the probability. So what's going to happen if, let's say, I increase n. So now n is equal to 20. So what will happen? Will the shape change? Well, no. This has, the p has stayed the same. So because this has stayed the same, it's still going to be symmetric. However, it will make sense. If they increase the number of trials, surely the number of successes would increase. Because if you're doing more and more trials, then there's going to be more chance each of the time you roll, there's more chance you're going to get a number of successes. So if you think about this before, so n is now equal to 20, then we can think about, like, oh, well, 20 times 0 0.5 is equal to 10. Or we can just think about, so like the mean is now going to be 10. So if this was 5, let's say this is here is like now, let's say 10. So this can refer to n dash. And then this is n dash. Now we have mean about here. So I'll just get that calculation out of the way. We can now see that the mean is now at 10, but we still have the bell shaped symmetrical, symmetrical curve. And it's going to look like that. And so it doesn't have to, be, it's not going to be exactly the same copy, uh, just shifted along, but it's because obviously it goes through a lot more values. However, it's still going to be symmetric and that's the important thing. It's going to be symmetric, but obviously it's shifted across. So that's what we can say. When n is increased, it's sort of like you're shifting along the x-axis or if n was decreased, then you'd shift along that way. But the general shape will remain the same. So that's what happened when n changes. So what about... So we have zero p equals zero point five and then n is equal to ten and we had a general shape that looked like uh, that well it was five and that was x and that was a probability. So we're going to change p now. So what about so it's important to look at the two different cases. So we're going to look at increasing P. So this is increasing P. So that means that the uh, the probability of success is now increased. So we'll say that um, uh, P dash is now equal to 0 0.8. So before we had a 50% chance, now we have an 80% chance of success. So firstly, like you think about the me, um, or think about how will the successes increase or decrease? Well, I think the success, successes, the number of successes are going to increase. Well, obviously, because you're going from 50% to 80%. So every time you have a trial and you're keeping the tr number of trials constant, you're going to have more successes. So that means we're now going to sort of see that the mean is going to shift along, but also most of the successes are going to be closer to the 10 mark rather than the zero mark. So the graph is now, if we work out the mean, which um, is the t probability times the number of trials, so 10 times 0 0.8, so that equals eight. So the mean is now at eight, okay? 
but most of the results are going to be along here, even though it's only two values. So it looks something like this. And so you can see most of them are clumped around here, and then you sort of have a tail that goes along here. And that's because the P is a lot higher now, so 80%. So it's much more likely they're going to be along here. So the reason before was symmetric is because you could take one on either side, one on the other, and it didn't affect. But now if you have 8 and you go to 9, that means you're now going from 8 successes to 9 successes, that's one extra success at 80% chance. But if you're going from 8 to 7, then that means there's one less success, so there has to be one more failure. And a failure, remember, is 20%. So you don't need to know too much specifics about why, but just understand that it sort of makes sense. When P increases, obviously they're going to uh, not just shift, but they're all going to clump towards the X. So there's a type of term when you see this, and this is called negatively skewed. So this is quite important. So when you increase P, negatively skewed. So it's not just increasing P, so it's negatively skewed when P is greater than 0 0.5. It's symmetric at 0 0.5, it's negatively skewed at 0 P is greater than 0 0.5. So if they increase P, it's going to clump more to the right, but if they increase P greater than 0 0.5, it will be negatively skewed and you'll see this. So the way you can sort of think about it is that there's this skewness and the skewness is, is around about here and that is on the negative side of the mean. So that's how, how, I, how I remember it. There's no te technical, oh, there is a technical way, but the easy, just however you want to remember it, just do it that way. But as I remember it, I think here's the mean the skew is on the negative side, so therefore it is negatively skewed. So now you should be thinking, what happens if P is less than 0 0.5? Well, if P is less than 0 0.5, it's going to have a very similar effect than when P was greater than. Um, okay, so we have... Yeah, the problem is here, and then we have this graph. And so that was when P is equal to 0 0.5. So now let's change P is equal to 0 0.3. And we'll say that N remains, con uh, N remains constant at 10. So this is now when uh, decreasing P... And specifically, when P is less than 0 0.5. Okay, so this is the standard graph we've had all the time, so at 5. So now we're decreasing P. So it's the same uh, thing as before, but instead of it being clumped at the top, it's going to be clumped at the bottom, because uh, the success rate is now at 30%, so you're going to have less successes. So you can calculate the mean, 0 0.3 times 10... Uh, times 10, which equals 3, so the mean is here at 3, and so you're going to have it clumped over onto the left-hand side. So it's not a great drawing, but it's just trying to emphasize that it's going like that. And so that's a general shape, but you can actually draw the specifics, and I'm literally just connecting up all, all, all the lines for the 1, the, from the 0 to the 10. So it's like the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. So as you can see here, it's more clumped to the left. And so it's what I described before, but obviously the inverse now. So because the probability of success is lower, they're going to be less successes, the probability of failure is higher. So it means that as you go further and further, it's going to become less and less likely of um, successes. So if the other one was positively skewed, uh, sorry, negatively skewed, then this one is going to be positively skewed. And you may think, why is that the case when the clump is lower? But as I said before, the way I remember it is that you have the mean here at 3. And now the skewness, this bit here, is on the positive side of the mean. 
So therefore, it is positively skewed. So I wouldn't try and memorize these, but it's good. You need to know them, but try and think logically. Like what happens with 0 0.3? What happens there? And then you do need to remember if it's positively skewed, if it's negatively skewed, or if it's symmetric. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys.